In our first online workshop, we had quite a bit of discussion about what's the actual color uh, that comes out of a tube. So I'd like to share with you what we discovered. So we have all kinds of names on tubes. We have burnt umber, raw umber, viridian. What do all those mean? They don't really tell us anything if we're not familiar with color. So if you if you were if you were a beginning painter and you go into art store to try to find some paints to get started, you might be confused about what you're actually getting. That's one thing. But the most important thing is when you're in the process of painting and you need a particular color. There, it might be confusing as to which, which one do I go for to find it. Now let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. There are two colors, both one called ultramarine blue and one called phthalo blue. Well, there are lots of blues, but I want to narrow it down to those two to illustrate my point. So, they're blue. So you might say, okay, uh, if, if, you, if you have something that's sort of in the orange range and you've heard, as you refer to my, my color wheel here, if you've heard that blue and orange are complements, and if you've heard that they will uh, neutralize each other, <clears throat> then you might, you, might, you might have an orange and you might need to make it a little duller, and so you'll reach for a blue. Okay. But when you reach for that blue, it actually turns green instead of neutralized. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. This, this could actually happen to you. So what I'll do is I'll just go down. This is phthalo blue. See, this is the idea. Some people think that you can use any blue to neutralize an orange. So this is phthalo blue. Now I'll put a little phthalo blue right here just with my palette knife on the camera. You see how dark that is? So you can't really tell. You can't really tell by the way it comes out of the tube um, what it will do. So if we'll add a little white to it, and then so I'll go in here and I'll pull a little white. Now, now we begin to see something about that shade of blue. All right. That's, now let's do the same thing with ultramarine. Ultramarine. That word is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a tongue twister. So we'll do the same thing with ultramarine blue. I'll just do it right down here so that you can see them side by side. Right there. And the same thing. You see they, they both look sort of black. They're really, really dark as they come out of the tube. Um, so we can add a little white into the ultramarine blue. You know what happened there? I reached for the wrong color. See, that's easy to do. If you are... If, if you have the two blues side by side and you're not able to identify them, it's easy to reach for the wrong color. So I'm glad you saw that. Well, I'm just going to take this off and let's go again. This time let's look for an ult. There it is. This is the ultramarine blue. I'll put the, I'll put the ultramarine blue right here. Now, <laughs> picking up with where we were before, if we pull a little white into the ultramarine blue, here we go. You can see the difference. Keep a little bit more. I want to make it about the same value as the as the mixture of phthalo blue. So there they are side by side. I hope the camera will pick up their difference. Now, um, you see they're really very different even though we call them blue. So let me also show you now on the canvas um, what happens when we choose both of those to neutralize an orange, which is what I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to pick up cadmium orange straight out of the tube right here. And then I'll pull it down, pull it on down. I'll just make a long splotch of cadmium orange here so that I can make my point. All right, so there's cadmium orange straight out of the tube. Now, and so you've been told that blue will, will create a neutral of orange. So you add, you add some of the phthalo blue. Let's just pull a little bit of the phthalo blue right into here. Let's start adding it. And let's get a little bit more of the phthalo blue into that. And you see it goes green. Can you see that? It, it, it does neutralize to a point, but then it begins to go green. Now let's pull, a, let's kind of go across here. You see that ends up being very, very muddy. It's not a good neutral at all. A very muddy that kind of leans towards green. 
Well, what if, what happens if we take phthalo blue then and pull phthalo blue into that? And once once you see the difference right here, phthalo blue then I'm uh, not phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. Sorry, the language there. Can you see the difference in that? You it gets more neutral. You don't actually get that green effect. Oh, we'll kind of pull the. I hope the camera picks that up. You don't actually get that green effect. Now let's see if I just pull that onto a, get it a complete neutral right in here. There we go, right in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the phthalo blue up here. I'm going to need some more phthalo blue right here and let's pull it add the th in proportion, add a little bit more of that phthalo blue in here and let you see that it begins to get greener and greener and there you go right there so you can see the difference between the two blues well <clears throat> how you, how do you know then oh, why am I going through this with you to make the point that it's important that you when you get a tube color that you understand or you know you know it you get to know it um, its character as it comes out of the tube so that you know what it will do for you so what we don't realize, or don't think about when we're buying colors, is that we're actually buying not just a color in a tube, but we're buying three things at once. We're buying a hue. Hue is the name of the color as we call them uh, on the color wheel. We're buying a value that's very dark to middle value, which is what we think of as a gray range, to light. So you're buying a value, you're buying a hue, but you're buying something else too. You're buying an intensity. An intensity, we all, a lot of times it's called chroma. Sometimes people call it saturation. It's one of those fuzzy things. What that means is even that color might be very, very identifiable as to its name. It might be very, very saturated. For example, here, blue, phthalo blue, a highly saturated color. Uh, if it were a, a Payne's gray, it would be a very low intensity blue. So, see what I mean? If you get to know those colors as to their hue, their value, and their intensity as they come out of the tube, then you have a real chance of being able to make a better decision about the color you choose. Now go back to these two colors. They low blue and ultramarine blue. Now, I'm going to go onto the palette now. First thing, I'm going to take ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add a little white to it. I'll just put a little white from my white mixture over here. And I'm going to bring it up to about a middle, or uh, a little bit, little bit lower than a middle value. Let's get it. And I want to put a splotch of this on a piece of paper, just a strip of paper. And this is a little test that you can do to identify your colors. Now, my first, my first um, question is, what hue is it? What hue is this color? Now, if I have a good color wheel, I can hold this, I hold this against the colors on the color wheel, and let the color wheel tell me what hue it is. Um, so, if you don't have a good color wheel, you can go to our website under and click in the menu under free stuff and you can get one free. But back to this. Now, let's see. Let's see. Ultramarine blue. Where is it on the color wheel? Can you see how familiar or how similar the ultramarine blue is to this? So, that pretty much tells us it's going to fall in that range of closer to blue on the color wheel. We can see that it picks up a little bit of purple. Can you see that? Can the camera show that? It begins to lean a little bit more towards violet. So that tells us that the hue of ultramarine blue is is blue towards violet. You can see it that way. But it to call it ultramarine blue doesn't really tell you what the hue is. It only identifies the pigment as it comes out of the tube. So now the other thing I want to show you is the phthalo blue. Speaking of blue again, the phthalo blue, and let's identify it as it comes out of the tube. So I'll just put some phthalo blue right here, and I'm going to bring it up to the same value, 
just so I can identify it, so I can see the color well enough to identify what it is. And then again, now if when you're if if you this is just strips of paper, and so if you're doing this, uh, just plain strips of paper, but be sure that you that you place the paint so that it's on that it goes off the edge of the paper. Otherwise, you won't really be able to compare it. Now, if I hold this blue, I'll need to add just a little bit more white to it. And, and I'm glad you see that because if on these really, really dark transparent colors, you really have to, in your test while you're getting to know them, you really have to add enough white in order to be able to see the hue, exactly what hue is there. So let's try, let's try it this way. Okay, I'm pulling it now with my palette knife onto the end of the paper. Now let's hold it up to this. Hold it up to the color wheel. I'm going to hold it right next to the blue. Do you see how different that is? I hope the camera picks that up. Now, if I move it a little bit more towards green, my eyes can perceive that it really is a greenish blue. It's not a pure blue, and it's certainly not a blue that leans towards purple. So it's actually a greenish blue by hue, by hue. So if I know it's a greenish blue, I won't select it to neutralize an orange because the word green tells me it's going to lean towards green. So if you, if you can do that, if you can take each one of your tube colors and simply take yourself through a, a little process where you really get to know that tube color, uh, then you can find out the information that you need. Now, that, that's only hue. So let's look at the other two. What value? What value is ultramarine blue as it comes straight out of the tube? Well, we talked about that earlier. It is dark. It's a dark value. It's so dark that on my palette, I confused ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. I didn't have them in their regular order on my palette. So I confused ultramarine blue with phthalo blue. I picked up the wrong blue. That's because they're so dark, I can't really see what the color is. That tells you the value is dark. So now we've got two pieces of information about these two colors. The, the value is dark. The hue is, for one, a, a greenish blue. For the other, a purplish blue or a violet blue. And, and so you can carry yourself through that exercise. But there's another piece of information that's very important. What is the intensity? Now again, when I hold these two strips against the color wheel, the color wheel, all the color wheels that are produced are produced at the highest intensity. So there you can use the color wheel as a guide towards intensity as well. So uh, the, if I hold these two, uh, I'm cutting them backwards. If I hold these two next to the color wheel and look for the intensity, and that is to tell me, do they look grayer, or are they are they more diluted? Now, one of my recent students in the workshop uh, used the word diluted, which I thought was really, really good. Is the color diluted, or is it fully, fully saturated? And you can see, you can see that the color is fully saturated, or pretty close to fully saturated. So that's your answer for the saturation. So then you have three pieces of information that tells you, thoroughly informs you, the hue, the value, and the intensity of the color as it comes straight out of the tube. Now, I want to go into another part of this. What about those colors that are so neutral that they're more difficult to identify? And I want to show you how you can, how you can identify those. So we have a number of those. Burnt umber, what does that mean to you? Burnt umber doesn't really tell you what color is in the tube. It says umber. If you're familiar with that, um, you might have maybe brownish, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really tell you what color it is on the tube. Some tubes have the color names on them, or the hue names on them. Like any, uh, any tube that you see the, the word yellow on, you know it's probably going to be in the yellow range somehow, and so forth. But how about transparent oxide red? It has the word red in there. Is it really a red? So there's the question that you ask yourself. So I want to start with that, with the transparent oxide red. Now, as I, this kind of test I'm going to show you can be done with any of the colors. 
uh, especially any of the neutral colors. I'm thinking, look, thinking now more in terms of the neutral colors and how can you identify the hue of a neutral color. So uh, I'm going to start with transparent oxide red. I've got it right here. Now you see when I put it on the palette, we just go through the, the whole thing here. When I pull it on the palette, we can see it's very dark, so there's the value. I know I have a dark color, which means I could use it in a circumstance when I need a dark hue that we're going to find out about. And I don't, I don't really know much more than that if I'm not familiar with color. Once I take it out of the tube, I no, don't really know much more than it's dark and it says it's red. It doesn't look red to me. Does it look red to you? Here's red on my palette. It doesn't really look red. So why would they call a color red when you bring it out of the tube and it doesn't look red? So you can't depend upon the label that's on the tube to tell you exactly what color you have. Well, what can, what can we do from here? What we can do to begin with is we can add a little white. First of all, I'm going to go into pure white here. I'm going to pull just a little white into this color. Not much. That actually was a little much at first. And it starts to reveal itself to me. Can you see that? That doesn't look red to me. You might say to yourself, okay, here's red. There's red right beside it. And, and that doesn't look red to me. So what am, we, what am I dealing with here? How can I tell? How, how, do I, how do I know how to use that color if I don't know what hue it is? So, one thing that you can do, and let me add just a little bit more, oh, I've got it there, a little, pull just a little bit more white into that, and let's get it about a middle value, usually testing these colors at a middle value, except for the yellow, orange, and the yellows, or those that are really light as they come out of the tube, you don't have to add any white to those, but testing these as a middle value, within the middle value range, is a little bit more helpful than, than adding more of the white to it. So, okay, so there I have, and some of you say, that's a good flesh tone. That's not a hue. We're talking of hue, and we want to know it's hue, so we know how to manipulate it. All right, so I'm going to now pull this, this mixture onto my little test strip here, and get it nice and covered. By the way, let me warn you about that. When you're doing these, these little experiments, um, don't be skimpy on when you're doing your test strip. I've seen a lot of people put just a little dab on the <laughs> test strip and you won't really be able to read it. All right, now, so it says it's red. Let's start with red. Does that look red to you? You know, maybe feels worried about, well, okay, so what can I do? Uh, well, well, I don't know. Is it violet? Is it red violet? Is it more red orange? And I hold it right here and that begins to to my eye, I begin to feel a little bit of red orange in there, but it also, you know, put it here, it begins to feel a little bit violet. So what do I do? How do I identify that color if I don't know what I'm doing? So I'm going to make a suggestion for you. First, let's start with a red. Or you, it says it's red, so let's start with a red. So I'm going to pull a red. Right, this is actually a cadmium red light. It's not the pure red, but it's cadmium red light, and I chose that uh, because it leans a little bit more towards orange. It says it's red, but the color actually leans a little bit more towards orange, uh, or, or I felt it pulling me towards more orange, and so I want to choose an orange red. You see the logic behind that? You choose the hue that's either in the range or one that's beside it. So I'm going to do that, first of all. Now, it's the intensity that's throwing us off. Uh, we, we can't identify the hue because of the intensity. The value we know is dark as it comes out of the tube. But with, without, we, we know the intensity is low, but we really don't know how low it is. So it's throwing us off because we're used to calling things flesh tones and brick tones and, and all those names that don't really tell us what hue it is. Right, so I'm going to first of all do the logical thing. I want to go for the complement. I want to go for the complement of red violet. Now what is the complement of red violet? I mean not red violet, I'm sorry, red orange. Red orange right here. Red orange, it said, the, the color wheel says the, the complement of red orange is blue-green. 
Well, let's try that. So I just happen to have some blue-green here in Viridian. The first thing I'll want to do is to make it the same value, and that's what I advise that you, you do when you're, if you're doing these tests, if you really, really are interested in, in identifying, being able to identify the colors that come out of your tubes. When you're doing these tests, always mix two colors of the same value, and if they're not the same value, you, you do a value correction there. So, um, so I'm doing that. Now, I'm going to pull a little bit of this red, or I pull this, a um, little bit of this, uh, this uh, blue green into the red orange. All right, a little bit more. All right, so the red orange. Now, okay, so I don't really know. Am I, am I in the right range yet? I need to get that just a little bit lighter. So I see a value difference between this and this. Well, or maybe I get this a little darker. I could do it either way, but you, when you're comparing for hue, the values need to be the same of the two colors you're comparing else you get thrown off by the value itself. So let's see here. There we go. There we go. Now, what I want to do next is to put side by side, I'll just go right here, side by side on some surface. It can be canvas or it can be you know, whatever you choose because this is an experiment. You don't care. There's there's the transparent oxide red. Now I'm going to go from my mixture here I'm going to put it right beside it. What do you think? Is that pretty close? And what does that tell you? It tells you that transparent oxide red is a red orange. It fits right here. So I don't need to take the experiment any further. I could go ahead and go with a violet exper experiment to see if it, if it leans in the violet range too. Um, but I'll let you do that to see what you discover. But you see, it, it's, it's a very simple thing to do. Uh, you can, once you start by, you can start by the tube name. You can start by comparing what comes out of the tube with the color wheel, just as I did then. And when the comparison doesn't sync, uh, doesn't read true to you, then you can begin with the name of the color as it comes out of the color wheel, uh, or in that range and then add its complement into it until, and to test it. Now see, that might not have worked out. I just happened to make the right choice to begin with. So now we know that we have a dark hue in transparent oxide red. We have, dark hue. We have, <laughs> I said that wrong. We have a red orange or orangish red. I think it's better to say it that way it, because no color is exact here. Colors lean towards each other as they move around in a circle. So we could say we have an orangish red. That's the hue. We have a dark value. That's the value. And the intensity, we have a moderate to low. Now when I said that, I didn't have to pull very much of the green, of the uh, blue-green into the red-orange in order to change its intensity. So it's more of a moderately saturated intensity. I might take this one step further. If I continue to pull that blue-green into that, it should go totally neutral. And you see right there it is. Uh, it's in that, in that range, right, right in there. You can see that gray pop up. So it would be totally neutral. It'd be uh, to uh, uh, completely unsaturated and low intensity if it were, if we could see any red in it. Here you are right here. Add just a little bit of red back into that, and when we can see any red, see some red in it, but not very much, very low intensity. When we can see, can still still see the hue, but it does, it's not as bright or saturated as the hue on the wheel. It will know it's in the moderate range of intensity. Of course, if we see it totally saturated as it appears as it appears on the wheel, it is high intensity. So we have that information now. With our transparent oxide red, we know the hue, the value, and the intensity. Now, we, we could use that information when we're painting. Uh, if in the painting you need something that is, uh, suppose you, you need to neutralize a blue-green. You know that you can reach for transparent oxide red and it will neutralize that blue-green. Or there are other things, other ways that, uh, if you ask yourself the question, what hue is it? What hue is it out there when you're looking at something? 
what value is it and what intensity it is, you have information to work with there. Whereas if you just say, okay, I need burnt umber to neutralize ultramarine blue, or I need burnt sienna to neutralize ultramarine blue, it, that kind of thing, that gives you a very narrow bit of information. It's like memorizing formulas. But if you know the hue, value, and intensity, and use that information to identify the colors as they come out of your tube, that opens up the whole world for you to be able to then have all kinds of varieties of options as you make your decisions. So all this came out of our live workshop. Uh, we're doing those live workshops now. You know how it works? We're just, it's almost as if we're in class together. Uh, all the students are gathered together through uh, uh, an app called Zoom, very much like Skype. And uh, we're working, we have a lesson, and then the students have a one-on-one -on -one session with me for, during the next several days. And then we gather back to together and look at the students' work. So it ends up being a complete cycle of a workshop. You might go to our, our uh, website, and I think it says Study Live with Diane in the, um, uh, in the right hand column there. Click on that and see what workshops are coming up next. So if you're really interested in color, this might be a good place to learn. So, and also if you have a quick tip, if you have something that you'd like for me to explore, leave us a comment right down here and we'll put it on our schedule. And there's your quick tip.